Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics, and in this video I'd like to discuss how I would be looking to tackle Prime Minister's questions now that we're in the phase of lame duck Prime Minister. When the strategy needs to change, as I think it does, you need to look at your tactics. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, despite the pressure that Boris Johnson is under, Keir Starmer is copying for a bit of flack himself. On the one hand, his allies point to the fact that just two and a half years ago, Labour had the worst general election results since the 1930s. You don't get a reset each election. You have to build on the last one. After that election, it did not seem at all credible that Labour could win the following election. In fact, you know, I was there at a local Labour Party meeting and the mood was very much of, we're going to have a rebuilding job here. And nobody really thought we could win the next election. You know, the best expectation was build into a stronger position to look at the next election after it. At least massively reduce the Conservatives' majority, weaken them, then build for government later. But now they are in a position where they could form a government, should there be an election this year. A remarkable turnaround. And you could argue that this has much to do with the Conservatives imploding, as anything Labour have done, but then you have to ask yourself, why are they imploding when they've got an 80-seat majority? Does it seem credible that they would be tearing themselves apart if they were not under electoral pressure? And that's a fair enough argument. There is a counter-argument. We need to kick the Tories out. It doesn't matter whether it's reasonable to win immediately after such a bad result. It has to happen in the interest of the future of the country. We simply cannot afford another Conservative win. It would tip us over the edge. We may transition from an elected dictatorship to a fully-fledged one. And if you do not perceive this risk, I would suggest you read some 20th century European history. But what would be some practical advice for Labour? Some are complaining about Starmer's dry performances. This is who he is. He's a lawyer. He's a good one. But remember, it's thanks to his careful traps in PMQs that Boris Johnson is now facing a Privileges Committee inquiry. Just you wait for that to get going properly. Come October, if not before, I guarantee that people will see what I'm talking about in terms of the coup that that represented. Starmer is not going to go from careful prosecutor to fiery orator. It's, it's not who he is. You cannot get someone to be who they're not. It's also no good seeking to change him for someone else. Labour, yes, they've got access to some better speakers, but they lack other qualities that people may be taking for granted from Starmer. Like a lot of things, you do take them for granted, but you'll soon notice them when they're gone. Like Neil Kinnock was a great speaker. Much good it did him when he lost two general elections. You know, but that does not mean Starmer cannot get more out of his verbal sparring. The way I look at it is this. There's no longer any point attacking Johnson personally. He's a dead duck. The focus has to be on the wider failure of the Conservative project and how Labour will make it better. So I would change tactics in PMQs now, not because they've been failing, they've been succeeding, but because you need to change them now because the strategy is different. The strategy was get rid of Johnson, that's in motion now, leave it. But because the goalposts have moved, you need to actually change your direction a little bit. Now I mentioned it last week when considering the last PMQs, and I'll flesh it out here. I think Starmer needs to get four elements into his questions now. The first is to quote a Tory promise. The second is to lay out the lack of progress on that promise. The third is to say how the last Labour government did way better. And the fourth is to say how the next Labour government would also do better. So I'll use housing as an example. It'll work with anything, but the Prime Minister talked about housing last week. So it would be an ideal topic for PMQs this week. So it could go like this. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister promised to build 100,000 new homes in a speech last week but there is scant evidence that he has a plan for doing so. The last Labour government built an average of almost 200 new homes a year, 200,000 new homes a year, and the Labour government that I will lead will get our building programme back up to that target. Can the Prime Minister explain why his own aims are barely half of what the Labour government have achieved and will achieve again? It's nice and concise. It lays out everything needs to get said, which is that the Conservatives lack ambition and effectiveness that Labour will do better, and because you'd mentioned what Labour actually did, it's hard to argue that the next Labour government wouldn't achieve it. After all, they achieved it last time, why wouldn't they achieve it again? So then you'd be ready for Johnson's response. Now, he could respond in any number of ways. He might try and use the line he used last week, 
Well, as mayor of London, you know, I built 100,000 new homes. Easy rebuttal, because he didn't. You could then respond, Mr Speaker, there were 94,000 new homes built in London during the Prime Minister's time as mayor of London. None of them were anything to do with him. Over two thirds of them were built using the Labour government's New Deal scheme, which was a national scheme that contributed to the average of 200,000 new homes built per year. And Labour were only in power for two of the eight years that the Prime Minister was mayor of London. Could the Prime Minister explain why the building of new homes in London dropped off so badly when his party came to power? And you instantly turn Johnson's defence into a quagmire. He's allowed you to open up a new line of attack, as well as repeat Labour's past successes. So where would Johnson go to try and defend himself? He could lie. Of course he could. He probably would. He can deny that the houses were built using Labour's scheme. The problem is, though, that Johnson is exposed as a liar to the public, and he's wrong. So people are less likely to trust him over Starmer because Johnson's a known liar. And even those who don't trust either of them could just look it up themselves and find, oh, actually Labour did build those. And Starmer can keep coming back to the fact that Johnson's aims for home building are only half of what Labour achieved in government. What does Johnson do then? Labour are promising to build more homes and have got the track record for having done so in office. And you can do the same for everything. If the topic is policing, you can explain that this promise of 20,000 new police officers seems to be taking a while. It's been a few years. Where are they? And even if it is realised, still means fewer police than existed when Labour were in power. Point out that Johnson's ambition is to have fewer police than under Labour and point out that actually we should have more because the population has grown. So Labour should promise to bring up the police numbers back to the per capita equivalent of 2010. So Labour will be promising to get more police into the service than the Tories are. Same with the courts, of which Starmer will know a great deal. Talk about all the courts that have been closed down by the Tories and how this has led to a backlog. Never been a better time to be a criminal, is what barristers and judges are saying. Starmer can promise to open courts and deal with the backlog, just as the Tories are trying to close them down. On the NHS, simplicity itself. He tackled that last week and it was a decent enough line of questioning. But as I said at the time, it missed out the crucial step of saying what Labour did and would do. It was very good at attacking the failure of the government. What it didn't do is say how it would be better under Labour. And you can bypass the pandemic altogether when you talk about backlogs of anything. Compare the pre-pandemic waiting times on the NHS with what they were under Labour. Then promise to get back to those waiting times. I think Labour are getting a lot of things right. I think some of them are not necessarily noticed by observers. But there are a few areas for improvement, and that improvement is realistic. We don't need Starmer to suddenly become a, a huge inspirational speaker. You work with what you have. And it's also not a huge liability at the moment. Yes, he's never going to win a personality contest against Boris Johnson, but Boris Johnson is buggered. His reputation's in tatters. And then you look at who might replace Boris Johnson. Do you see an inspirational orator waiting in the wings? I don't. I don't think Starmer's uh, dry performance is all that much of a liability now. But you work with what you've got anyway. And what we have is someone who's excellent at picking out details and tearing an argument down. But what he needs to do is move from the legal argument, where all you have to do is prove the defendant is guilty, which he's very good at, to the political argument where you also have to prove that you are better. Remember, in 2019, Boris Johnson was not arguing that the Conservatives were delivering uh, a, a great life for people. He actually said, yeah, it's shit, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely crap life under the Tories. Sorry about that. But you know what? Be even worse under Labour. So that's the bit now. Labour have got to say, actually, it'd be a hell of a lot better under Labour. And, and Starmer, as I say, he does the first bit well. You know, the, the attacking the Conservatives does that well as would be expected. But he needs to weave that second aspect in now. And the beauty of this is it doesn't need him to change his pattern or put on an act. It can all be planned well in advance. Just get those four elements in. You know, you can plan it all in advance. You can plan the counterattacks because you know what Johnson's going to come back with. He's very simple. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please join the, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.